Hello. Hello, sir. Hey, sir. Yes, man. <laughs> Jennifer, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Good. Tired. Good. Hello, Fleming. How are you? Good, sir. How are you? I'm okay. It took me forever to get in the, uh, the meeting. I don't know what the problem was. Hmm. Can you see the screen? I can see it, sir. Okay. Hey, will you please? You know, see here is a uh, some blue kind of portion, and I again I get my cursor like this. But if you if I go to the white page, I have this one. Look at here, some see some square type of thing. So I don't see that arrow. You know how to fix this arrow? Me? Um, yep. It seems like it's trying to copy each page. Um, can you like double click it? Double click. It was like click, click. Or maybe that, no, that doesn't no. work. No. Um, oh, look, it's gone now. It's not gone. See, see, still I have that square. Oh. I want uh, arrow. You know what I mean? I'm looking. Let me see what I can do. Um, What mm -hmm. guys? I think it was vibration of string one dimensional wave equation. This this one we did last time, right? I think so, sir. Yep. Somebody's knocking. Oh, mine's doing that too. I don't know what it is, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe uh let's see. Um, so you can get, well, I have a different version of Adobe than you, but there's a button you can get the, it's like a hand button and it won't make it blue. So I hand do. button means uh, what? Um, let's hand see. Button. It looks like a little hand. Let's see. Uh, go to tools. Sorry, guys.
Anyway, guys, that's fine. Let's start. Um, mm -hmm. We can go to uh, edit at the top. Edit. It's like the top left. Where is it? Just wait, 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 wait. It's beside file. In my file, okay, edit. Then, edit. Mm -hmm. uh, is there preferences? Um, preferences. I don't see that, Danny. Um, Protection, uh, yeah, preferences, then. Okay. Go it, to, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. You can go to general. General, okay. General. And then you can say, um, make hand tool. Make hand tool read articles, right? Or you can hit, it says to hit make hand tool select text and images. Make hand tool. Or yeah, you can go to accessibility. No, but what you want me to do in general, I have make hand tool read articles and yeah. Make, and yeah, so which one? I guess click both of them. Okay, and make hand tool select text and images, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, and I have another one over here that is it says so online storage when saving filing and create links from URLs. Yeah, I think those are right. Okay, and then go to accessibility on the left under 3d and multimedia accessibility yes uh -huh. and then um okay that's right let's see okay. if that works Hopefully. you want me to hit only, okay yeah hit okay okay nope oh that's what that was what was on the uh, adobe um, let's see what this one is. Okay, that's okay, no problem. I think I hit some button, I don't know. Right. Okay, guys, so let's start. The vibration of stress strings, one dimensional heat equation, that's what we did last time. Heat equation, that means you have square on both sides. Del square y by del d square equal to c square del square y by del x square. And you guys just went through this one and finally we ended up with this equation. So how this equation was generated, that's what we saw last time. And you can see over here del square y by del t square time function. And it's a displacement, c square del square y by del x square. And then after we were provided some boundary condition and the initial conditions. And uh, then I told you that whenever you are asked to solve the PDEs or some applica applicable problems with some boundary and initial conditions. First of all, at the beginning of the example, you need to use your boundary conditions and then you can proceed further. That was not the case for the differential equation. In differential equation, first we solve the differential equation and then after we found our YC and YP, we added them and then after at the end of the example, we use the initial conditions. Here the situation is different. We first use this initial condition before we proceed further. And I think then after I gave you just two examples in homework. Am I right, guys? You're right, sir. Have you gone through those two examples, all of you? We had to submit them, didn't we? No, this was not a part of your submission. Oh. It's your next assignment by the end of this month. But I just request, uh, I requested you guys to just go through these two examples. I will let you know about uh, those two examples. Okay, fine. Then after we just went over the solution of the partial differential equation in general. So y equal to xt, x is a function of small x displacement, t is a function of time. Both are independent and both depends on y. And that's why we can just take this one and then we, because we have two second, second order derivative both the sides. That's why I went over, went through two derivatives, plug the values, use separable variable. I converted my equation to auxiliary form. And then after I said that we have three different choices. Roots are positive, real and distinct like this. And then if your k is positive, k is negative, k equal to zero. 
And accordingly, we can use, we have these three solutions. Most of the times, whenever you have periodic function, at that time, you are going to use the second solution. And then after we solve one example, these are the initial conditions and like this, we went through this one, and then after we solve this example. So this example says that a string is stretched and fastened to two points L apart. Motion is separated by displaying the spring in the form y equal to a sine pi x by L, from which it is released at time t equal to zero. So that the displacement of any point at a distance x from one end at time t is given by this one. Right, that's what you need to figure it out. And you are given this equal to y. And boundary condition here, that is y zero t and y l t. Zero is the initial point and l is the length. Right, and at time t equal to zero, it is zero. This is the velocity function is given, means here it is the boundary condition. Then after I just used my standard equation for the heat equation, standard solution of the heat equation, where a n is given by the Fourier series, this is the half range Fourier series. I solve half range Fourier series, plug this value back over here, and I got my answer. And we got the answer. So that's what we did. And then after I just requested you to go through the second example, I think we did not go over the second example. No, I think we did this one too. Yes. A tightly stretched string with fixed endpoints x equal to 0 and L is initially at rest. Initially at rest. Initially means when time t equal to 0, x equal to 0 in its equilibrium position. If it is set vibrating by giving to each of its points a velocity lambda x l minus x. The velocity at uh, each of these points are given. Find the displacement of the string at any distance x from one end at any time t. Again, the same thing, look at over here, I use the standard equation of my wave equation and then after, in this standard equation, since the string at the initial that is at rest, so y x zero equal to zero. So you can replace this t by zero throughout. You're gonna get this equation where a n is given by this this one, a n equal to zero, sorry. And because other things are given in terms of velocity, so I just went through the derivative of this uh, solution operator. So once you get the derivative and then after, where is it, yeah. Once you get the derivative, you're gonna get this one. And then after using this one, I'm getting the b n, and b n is nothing but my Fourier coefficient. So just I counted bn and then after I just plug back over there in the example and I got the answer. And then after I give you these two examples in homework, these are the answers. Am I right guys? If you have not done this thing, please do it, please do it. Because my intention you for you guys to went for these examples during these three, four days, because once you understand this example, once you understood this example, it will be really very easy for you to digest the next one. So next one is one dimensional heat flow. Now, just keep in mind this thing, whenever we are working with the heat flow at that time, your time function must be of order one, your displacement, displacement function must be of order two. So here it is du by dt equal to c square and del square u over del x square. <sighs> and you can see over here, there is some plate and heat passes through these phases one phase, second phase like this. One phase is given by Q1, second phase is Q2. It's a vertical line like this, vertical phase. So heat passes along these phases Q1 and Q2. Yes. And I want somebody, Daniel. Daniel, where are you? Daniel, he's not here? I'll text him, sir. Okay, and Valenzuela? Valenzuela, Mike? How you doing, sir? Good, yes, I was looking for you. Good. Zach, will you please read this one slowly? Just try to look at this figure twice, guys. This is the zero point, zero, this is x. Displacement in x is given by delta x, x plus delta x, and there's another phase q2. So q1 and q2 like this. This is my some one, one side that is equal to a. And this is the length zero to l. 0 to L, displacement X to X plus delta X, Q1 and Q2 phases. Okay, Zach, please go ahead. Consider the flow of heat by conduction in a uniform bar. It is assumed that the, the sides of the box are insulated and the loss of heat from the sides by conduction or radiation is neg neg negative. Um, take take one, end. one end of the bar as the origin and the direction of flow as the positive x-axis. The temperature mm -hmm. uh, u at any point. 
of the bar depends on the distance x of the point from one end and the time t. Also, mm -hmm. the temperature of all points of any cross section is the same. Right, temperature. We have to assume some of the things. The temperature of all points of any cross section. Suppose you take one cross section, the so temperature on all the points on that cross sectional plate, cross section part, remains the same. Okay, so consider a flow of heat by conducting in a uniform bar. Just uniform bar conducting a flow of heat. Heat is flowing in this direction. It is assumed that the sides of the bar are insulated. That means heat is not flowing out. So we don't have any loss of heat. So whatever heat we have produced over here, we are passing that is, con uh, that is a conservative, right? So just look at over here. It is assumed that the sides of the bar are insulated and the, lo the loss of heat from the sides by conduction or radiation is negligible. So there is no conduction, um, there is no loss of heat by conduction or radiation, right? Take one end of the bar as the origin, that means this one. And the second end is L, like this. So one end of the bar, that is origin. And the direction of the flow is the positive axis. Direction is in this direction. Flow, flow of heat is in this direction. The temperature U at any point of the bar, temperature U at any point, suppose here, somewhere, any point of the bar, temperature U at any point of the bar depends on the distance X, how much distance it has covered, it has traveled, of the point, from one end of the time piece. So from here, how much distance it has traveled, your heat has traveled, so that point we are going to find the temperature at some time t. Also the temperature of the points of any cross section is the same. So once you take this cross at this point over here, and if you take over here, let me just show it to you. Suppose you are taking the point or heat over here at this point or at this point, it will remain the same in first bar. It remains the same throughout the cross section. Means in cross section, all the points they have the same same temperature, same heat. The amount of heat crossing any section of the bar per second depends on the area A. That's why I just denoted over here. This is my area A. So the amount of heat passing through this cross section area that remains the same at all the points as we assumed, as I told you. So amount of heat passes through, amount of heat crossing any section of the bar per second depends on the area A of the cross section and the conductivity K of the material of the bar and the temperature gradient daily by dx. So amount of heat passes through one section of the bar depends on three different items. One is the area A of the cross section, your area A, sorry, area A of this cross section, and then after <coughs> the conductivity K, electric conductivity, you can say, and the material of the bar, or and the temperature gradient del u by del x. Gradient means a kind of derivative whenever your vector field function at that time use gradient, del u by del x, the rate of change of temp, uh, temperature with respect to your area, the rate of change, change of temperature with respect to distance or displacement x. And therefore, what is your Q1? So Q1, that is actually the quantity of the heat flowing into the section of a distance A. Quantity of the heat flowing, quantity of the heat flowing due to the section of a distance X. So that is given by negative of Ka del U by del X, depends on X per second. Here negative side indicates that when your distance increasing, your temperature is decreasing because whatever temperature you will be over here, that temperature is slightly higher than the temperature over here because you are giving your heat at the initial point. So temperature over here, of course, here throughout the road, throughout the, all the points of the cross section, temperature is same. But the temperature over here and temperature of any point over there, that is little difference. Something, this part is something more heated than this one. That's what I mean. So Q1 is the quantity of the heat flowing into a section at a distance x that is equal to negative of Ka del u by del x, where K is nothing but the constant and negative sign indicates that as x increasing, distance increasing, your temperature decreasing. Q2 is nothing but the quality of the heat flowing out of the section of a distance x plus delta x. So Q1 is here and Q2 is quality of heat Second, flowing out from this section, x plus delta, this cross-sectional section, 
whenever I say section, it is to be understood that we are talking about this cross-sectional part, cross-sectional section, X plus delta A. So if I take the difference, Q1 minus Q2, so the amount of heat retained by the uh, slab with the thickness delta X is given by this one, delta U by delta X, X plus delta X minus delta U by delta X per second, right? Because Ka and just subtract this one from this one, so that's it. X plus delta X, this minus this. But the rate of increase of heat in the slab that is given by rate of increase of heat rate of increase of heat in the slab that is given by S rho A delta X delta U by delta T. So what we mean by this X? This X is in the specific heat in that cross section part, which is not known to us right now. Rho is a density function of the material, density material function. A is the area of the bar. Delta X is the change in the displacement, heat flowing from X to X plus delta X. And del u by del t is the rate of change of heat with respect to time. So the rate of increase of heat in the slab, because every time each and every point is heated at time increases, and that's why the rate of change of heat is increasing. And that is given by S rho A delta X delta U by delta T. This is all physics terminologies, where S is, the, okay. Now, if I compare this one and two, so from one and two, I have this Q1 minus Q2, okay, uh, that is equal to this one. So let me just plug this value over here, plug this value over here, Q1 minus Q2, and that you can compare with this one. Here you have A and A will get canceled out. So S rho del U by del T equal to this one as delta X tends to zero because delta is an extremely small displacement than X, has extremely small change than X. So delta X tends to zero in that case, you have limit definition of derivative as limit delta x tends to zero, del u by del x, x plus delta x, and del u by del x, x. So you can see f less x plus delta x and f of x divided by delta x. So it's a limit, limiting position. Or if you compare this one with your calc 1, article 3.1, it is a limiting position or limit definition. Of course, it is pretty, but limit definition of derivative. And because this limit definition, already your function is given in terms of the derivative, del u by del x, and you are applying one more limit definition, one more derivative. So it would be converted in terms of del square u by del x square. And my left hand side is del u by del t. So that's how this heat equation is generated. You're going to get del u by del t equal to, or of course x and rho, is equal to k times del square u by del square. If you divide by s and rho, so k times, k divided by s and rho, all these things will turn out to be a one constant. And that constant I would just like to mention as c square. So k over s rho, that is your c square. So del u by del t equal to c square del square u over del x square. And this constant is the diffusivity of the material of the bar. This constant, because this depends on your material, because rho is the density of the material, k constant. So that is the diffusivity of the material of the bar. That's given by this k square. Okay, just like your previous heat equation, no, sorry, previous wave equation, the heat equation solution is also exactly in the same way. Same way I mean to say that, again, I'm going to use U equal to X, capital X times capital T. Capital X times capital T has a solution where capital X is simply a function of X, capital T is simply a function of T, both are independent, but U depends on both of them. So because I require just first derivative of my time function, so that means I'm going to go just one derivative of with respect to t and two derivatives with respect to x. And I will come back and plug these values over here in one. And then after again, I will be getting some auxiliary equation. Exactly same way, exactly same method what we did last time. Okay, so x equal to ut, as I explained to you, first derivative del u by del t x t dash, second derivative with respect to x is x double dash t. Go back, plug back over here. So you're going to get x t dash equal to c square x double dash dash t separate the variables x double dash divided by x and t dash divided by t. And c square, I would just like to take this side. So one over c square in this one. Okay, again, x double dash is the independent, x is the independent variable only with respect to x. This is, t is a function of t, both are independent. That means I can assume that is equal to some constant k. I can assume that is equal to some constant k. So del square x, or you can write x double dash over x equal to one over c squared t dash over t equal to some k, small k. 
if you want to write this x double dash, you can write it down like this del square x over del x square and x this x as it is equal to 1 over c square del t over del t and t equal to k. If you send this x to other side, if you compare this one with your k, this one with your k and this with k. So this one with k will give you d square x over del x square minus dx square, just function of one variable, minus kx equal to zero, and dt by dt minus this t and k, so t and k, and this c square also other side, so c square k t, left side it is negative equal to zero. That means again, I'm getting my two equations, look at over here, auxiliary equations, and again, I'm getting my solutions exactly in the form of, I mean to say, just similar in the form of the wave equation. So here, auxiliary equation is d square minus k equal to zero, d square minus k equal to zero means d equal to plus or minus square root of k. I don't want to go for the square root and that's why I just would like to mention that p equal to k is equal to some number and that is equal to p square. So let me write down plus or minus p. So because my roots are real and distinct and that's why just by your DFQ course, homogeneous function, right hand side zero, because right hand side zero, solution is given by c1 e to the power px plus c2 e to the power negative px. My second part, here it is, d square, sorry, dt over dt, that is equal to c3 and this one. So, of course, you can write dt by dt, separate the variables. You don't have to go through this method. You can use chapter two also, separable variable, or you can write like this. So, d equal to k c square, k is p square c square, and solution is given in the form of c3 e to the power p square c square t. But this is my x. This is my t, this is my t solution. Just take this capital X and capital T, plug it back in my assumption of the solution, assumption of the solution over here, u equal to xt, u equal to x. Just plug this x and t. It means again, you are going to get same kind of things, just like your wave equation. This is my x, this is my t. Three conditions are there, three possibilities are there, right? The first possibility is this one. Second possibility is k is positive, that is first one, k is negative, negative of p square. That means you're going to get plus p square sign, means it is in terms of sine and cosine. Here's this one. And if k equal to zero, just roots are real and repeated because zero, zero. So c1 x plus c2. If you plug this x and t in your solution, u equal to x, you're going to get u equal to x equal to this one, u to x equal to this one, and this one. So three different solutions you will be getting. According to your nature of the problem, you will be using one of these solutions. So it depends. But as I told you, if you're a periodic function at that time, mostly we will be using the second solution. But it depends always the nature of the problem. Now, it depends on the nature of the problem. Out of these three solutions, we have to choose the solution which is consistent with the physical nature of the problem since u decreasing, u decreases as time increases and only suitable solution of the heat equation that is cosine and sine form because u is the temperature, I'm oh sorry, yeah, temperature is decreasing when time increasing because initial part of the heat, we have more heated and then after temperature gradually decreasing when time increases, time goes on. Okay, so C1 cosine of Px plus C2 sine of Px e to the power negative C square P square T means the second one is the solution most of the time. Let's see this example, guys. First example was the vibrating string example last time. And today we have an example of a heated road. So wave equation, heat equation in one dimension, two equation, two dimension. These are the most important examples for our applications for the Fourier series in PDEs. <laughs> a road of length L <coughs> with insulated sides is initially at a uniform temperature u0. A road of length L means zero to L is the length of the road with insulated sides. Sides are insulated, that means we don't have any loss of heat. Is initially at a uniform temperature u0. Initially, when time t equal to zero, your temperature is u0 at time t equal to zero. Its ends are suddenly cooled to zero degree and are kept at that temperature. Ends are suddenly cooled to zero degree centigrade, right? Ends are zero degree 
suddenly cool to zero degree centigrade and are kept at the temperature. Find the temperature of function u x t. Find the temperature function u x t. Okay, standard equation, heat equation is given in this form. So temperature u x t satisfies the heat equation, this one. In the solution of this heat equation, just now we figured it out. We saw this solution that is u x t equal to c1 cosine p x plus c2 sine p x e to the power negative c square p square t. Okay, now it says that since the ends are zero, that means x equal to zero and x equal to L are cooled at zero degree centigrade, right? Because these are the ends, x equal to zero and x equal to L because that's the length of the road. So are cooled to zero degree centigrade and kept at that temperature throughout. Throughout this process, this temperature is maintained at zero degree temperature on, the both, on both the ends of the bar. The boundary conditions are given U0T and ULT that is equal to zero because now the temperature at initial stage as well as the final stage of so zero and L at any time T that is equal to zero. In the initial stage as well as the after T equal to suppose 10 minutes, this remains the same initial and end point remains the same. So that would be considered as my boundary condition. And initially the heat is given to U0, U0 so U X at zero initially means when T equal to zero, there is no displacement, X S at zero equal to U zero is the initial condition. So I fixed my boundary condition, I fixed my initial condition. <coughs> and now, since U T zero, now look at over here. I have this solution and immediately I would like to plug this value of my boundary over here before I proceed further. And that's what I've been telling you since last like two classes that in PDEs or applications, we need to first plug the values of boundary or boundary or initial conditions before we proceed further. Okay, so u zero t equal to zero, u zero t equal to zero. If I plug it over here, if I replace this x by zero, cosine zero is one, sine zero zero, this term will disappear. So c one e to the power negative c square p square t, that would be my right hand side. Left hand, left, left hand side that is equal to u x t, u x t, that is equal to left hand, sorry, u zero t, u zero t, and that is equal to zero. So left hand side is zero. So if you solve this equation, you're gonna get your C1 because exponential function never be zero. It's a zero product rule. So C1 a times b equal to zero, either a equal to zero or b equal to zero. Here a is C1, b equal to this one. B is an exponential function never be zero. So C1 has to be zero. So my C1 is equal to zero. My C1 is equal to zero. All of you are getting me or not Mike? Mike, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, still Daniel is not here, right? Daniel? No. I texted him, sir, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting on him to get back to me. Okay. So my C1 equal to zero. Okay. Once C1 equal to zero, let me go back and plug this value over here so that I can reduce my equation because I'm throughout, I'm going to work with this equation, solution. So U X T equal to C1 equal to zero, no, no need to write. C2 sine P X e to the power negative C square P square T. Negative C square P square T, that is my U X T. Okay, my boundary conditions. My boundary. <coughs> Look at here, guys. My boundary condition ULT equal to zero. Sorry, ULT equal to zero. That is my boundary condition. I used the first boundary condition and I got my XC1 equal to zero. Now I'm using my second boundary condition ULT equal to zero. <coughs> that means if I replace my X by U in the solution, if I replace in this solution, suppose X by, uh, X by L and T as it is. So X is replaced by L. We don't have this term, X is replaced by L, so it is PL, C2 sine PL, and that's it, it's about E to the power negative C square P square T. C square P square T. Okay. So this is my second boundary condition, that is equal to zero, C2 sine PL, X is replaced by L, last part as it is, again, 
see you don't have c1 and c2 both zero right already we fix c1 equal to zero so you can't say that c2 equal to zero now otherwise you know what will happen the heat equation there is no meaning of heat equation right it won't be satisfied so that's why i'm not comparing with c2 sine pl equal to zero into e to the power this one c2 sine pl equal to zero and either this one equal to zero but this is the exponential function never be zero graph is always increasing function never touch x axis never be zero so sine pl equal to zero sine theta equal to zero means theta equal to n pi so sine pl equal to zero pl equal to n pi so my pl is n pi right guys my pl is n pi now again go back and plug this value of pl is the pl equal to n pi in my second solution so my first solution second solution was this one this one i forgot to put the rectangle over here rectangle box okay so let me just plug these values over here. So what I'm going to get, my uxt equal to <clears throat> uxt, that is equal to bn sine n pi x by l, bn sine n pi x by l e to the power. Why n pi x by l? Because I just fixed my p o and p l equal to n pi. So p equal to n pi by l, p equal to n pi by l. And I just plug that value over here for my p in my equation too. So PL equal to P equal to N pi by the sine N pi X by L e to the power negative C square e to the power negative C square. And again, P is there. So N square pi square divided by L square and T as it is. T as it is. So that is my UXT. That is my UXT. If you compare this UXT over here in your summation or uh, this is just one phase, one phase of your bar, your one cross-sectional section. If you are going to add all kind of cross-sectional sections, it's a summation sign. So uxt equal to this one. uxt, that is equal to this one. This one, bn sign this one. Where bn is again your half range Fourier series because your range of the road is at 0 to L. So it's a half range Fourier series, just 0 to L. We are not counting negative L or like this. It's just 0 to L. Initial condition is given to ux0 equal to u0 u x 0 when time t equal to 0 now here in this equation c when now time t equal to 0 u x 0 is u 0 and uh, b n as it is and t equal to 0 t equal to 0 to the power 0 is simply 1 so this term will disappear sine n by x by l and b n is given to you as i told you it's a half range Fourier series so 2 by l integration 0 to l and my function u 0 sine n by x by l dx right fx sine n by x by l dx fx is my u0 fx sine n by x by l dx that is a half range for your series definition okay guys n by x by l so what will happen that is equal to if your n is e1 it is zero because sine 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi is zero your n is odd in that case you're going to get 4u0 over n pi right so let me just solve this one for my ut so ut equal to temperature ut is given in this form for u0 let me plug this value of bn let me plug this value of bn over here this value over here if you plug it back you're going to get your heat equation uxt equal to 4u0 summation runs from 135 because n odd and like this and suppose you want to convert this n in terms of suppose some 2m minus 1. 2m minus 1 means now you can write your summation index from 1 to infinity because it is 2m minus 1. n is replaced by n minus 1 or sometimes, I don't know, I just use the same symbol n, but you can write 2m minus 1. You can write n replaced by 2m, but that sounds good, no problem. So uxt equal to this one, where n runs. So you can write, you can end over here. This I'm good with this one too. But if you don't want to write this n, n equal to odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, and if you want to go through the full sequence, n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, at that time, n is replaced by 2n minus 1. So if I take n equal to 1 here, 1 by 1 is 1. Here, if I take n equal to 1, 2 minus 1 is again 1, same. n equal to now 3, so 1 by 3. n equal to 2, 2 to the 4 minus 1, 3. So you have, every time you will be getting the same thing. So they're, they're both are identical. So that's how you can solve the heat equation. Any doubt in this example? Any doubt in this example? Zach, Mike? Sure, I can, sir. Okay. 
good. Let's go for example number two. <coughs> An isolated road of length L has it ends A and B maintained at zero degree centigrade and 100 degree centigrade respectively. Means initial point zero, uh, initial point zero that is at zero degree centigrade and the final point L length that is 100 degrees centigrade respectively until steady state condition prevails. Steady state condition means you have the uniform temperature throughout the bar, throughout the road that is prevailed. If B is suddenly reduced to zero degree centigrade, B means your end point, suddenly reduced to zero degree centigrade and maintained at zero degree centigrade, find the temperature at a distance X from A at time D, means in the middle of the mid of the bar, not exactly mid, but any point of the bar, suppose that distance is X from your first capital A is means zero. Capital B means L. Zero to L is the length of the road. So capital A we mean by that point is your zero point, first end of the road and B is nothing but capital B is your total length is L. So this is L end point of the road, final point of the road. You can see the length of the road. So find the temperature at any distance x. So you need to find uxt, just like the previous case. Find also the temperature if the change consists of rising the temperature of A to 20 degrees centigrade. See here, A was zero degrees centigrade initially. Now it says that initially, suppose it is 20 degrees centigrade and reducing that of B to 80 degrees centigrade. So now B is not 100 degree, it is 80 degree. So whatever, once you are done with first example, just you need to change the values over here for the second example. For second example, your A is 20 degree instead of zero and B is 80 degree instead of 100. That's it. Again, solution is quite simple, guys. Look at over here. The temperature function uxt satisfies the differential equation del u by del t equal to c square del square u by del x square. And prior to the temperature change at end B when P equal to zero, the heat flow was independent of time, steady state condition, steady state condition. When the temperature U depends only upon X and not on T, only upon X, temperature U depends only on X now. Usually your U depends on X and T, but here, here, your temperature depends on x, x is the distance traveled by the heat and the zero and L, these are the endpoints where my temperature is fixed, that is zero degree, that means my U function doesn't depend on this time t, it depends just on my displacement x. And that's why I have this equation will be reduced to, now it is independent of this one, t, means del square U by del x square equal to zero. Del square u by del x square equal to zero. What's the general solution? U equal to x plus b, where a and b are arbitrary constants, right? Del square u by del x square equal to zero means u equal to x plus b. U equal to x plus b. Or you can write u equal to, because second derivative equal to zero means d square minus zero equal to zero auxiliary equation, so d equal to zero, zero. That means roots are real and repeated, and that's real and repeated. That's why we can write u x t equal to, Yes, please. Yes, C1 plus C2x and outside your function. But C1 plus C2x, C1 is B. I counted over here, I considered here. And C1, C1 plus C2x, so C1 plus C2x. Or in general, you can write AX plus B or A plus BX, your choice. A and B are arbitrary constants. So this is all just like your DFQ. Okay, since U equal to zero, for x equal to zero because x equal to zero at x value equal to zero. And that's why, because x is equal to zero, my u will be zero. u will be zero, that is given to you. And u equal to 100 for x equal to L. u equal to 100 for x equal to L. If you plug this value, u equal to zero and x equal to zero, u equal to zero and x equal to zero, you're gonna get b equal to zero. So my b equal to zero. If you plug this value, u equal to 100, u equal to 100, and x equal to L. So 100 equal to AL plus B equal to L is zero. So AL equal to zero. So A equal to 100 by L. A equal to 100 by L. If you plug these values back over there in your 
heat equation solution, ux t is always zero, so that is equal to 100 by Lx. 100 by Lx. If you come, if you plug this value over here, u equal to 100 by Lx. B is zero. 100 by Lx. This is the simplest one. The boundary conditions are u zero t equal to zero and u l t equal to zero. See here, this and these points are different, and these and these are same, but that's why it's a boundary condition. So proceeding just like in example one, the most general solution is given in the form ux t equal to bn sin n pi x by l and this one. Negative c square n square pi square t square by l square. Where ux zero equal to already we fix 100 by lx. So just take t equal to zero throughout. If you take t equal to zero, ux zero, t equal to zero, this part is zero. bn, bn, sin, sin, n pi x by l, n pi x by l. In my left hand side, u x at zero equal to 100 by l x, 100 by l times x. That is this one. Where b n is given by, what is a b n? Which is the half range Fourier series where b n 2 over l 0 to l, right? And your f x, your f x is 100 x by l, f x sine n by x by l dx, n by x by l dx. That is my b n Fourier series. It is easy to solve this Fourier series. Just use u into v rule. Just use u into v rule. So this is my u and this is my b. This is my u and this is my b. Good. So you can see over here, guys, this is the constant 100 by L. Let me pull it out. So 2 times 100 is 200. And here it is L times L is L square. Only x and this one is left out. So I would just like to consider this as my u and this as my b. So x as it is, integration of v is this one. Sine is negative cosine n by x by L divided by n pi by L. Now, extended form of u into v rule, derivative of x is 1, integration of the second part. So sine is, cosine is converted to sine, sine as it is, n pi x by l, and divided by n pi by l, and this n pi by that is square. Then after I'm going to get the derivative 0, so I have to stop 0 to l. If you use second fundamental theorem of calculus, your upper range x is replaced by your l, and the lower range x is replaced by 0, if you are doing, because here it is sine n pi x by L, LL will get cancelled out, sine n pi is 0, cosine n pi x by L, LL will get cancelled out, cosine n pi is negative 1 to the power n, negative 1 to the power n. Right, guys? This part is 0, just we are not concerned about this now. So this one, this is the ultimate form. So x is replaced by L, so here it is L, n pi by L, this L and L will be n, L square, L square divided by n pi, and this negative sign out, so negative sign and cosine and pi is negative 1 to the power n. So finally, I'm getting this one as in my bn. Just go back and plug this value of bn over here, bn over here, and you are done. And that is t. Uh, that is the equation of a heat equation when initial temperature and the final endpoint temperature they are zero degree. And in between, at any x, temperature would be this one. If you take the values of x, different values, suppose your length is 0 to L, L is 100 and 0, so 0 to 100 meter. And suppose you want to find at 30, 30 meter, what would be the temperature? So you can replace this x by 30, and here also x by 30, x by 30, and like this. So you are going to get, at x equal to 30, your time is, you can first calculate your time, and then after, you are going to get that, that portion of the road will be heated up to this much of degree centigrade, like this. There is a tool, MATLAB tool for PDE. If you enter this PDE, if you try to plug these different values of X and T, you are going to get different graphs. So just play with this one. If you have some time, just play with this one. It is really very cool to watch the graphs, coloring graphs. Any doubt in this example, guys? I mean, hello guys. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you good, Zach? Uh, yes, sir. No question. Okay. Jennifer? Yes, sir. I already said yes. Okay. Good. Let's go to the B part. Sir, you wearing your uniform today? 
my uniform. I just send it to. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have to wear my uniform, but uh, it's not here. It's okay, sir. I won't tell. <laughs> Thank you. Sir, I gotta run to the bathroom real quick. Yeah, I can give you a rest of five minutes. Just break off, not five minutes, three minutes, please. Break off, so, then after we proceed. Yeah. Three twenty, we're coming back. Yes, three twenty means four minutes. Okay. Big compromise. Three twenty. Okay, guys. <clears throat>
Oh, okay, guys, let's start. <laughs> second part. Second part means where my initial condition, initial temperature of the road that is 20 degree Fahrenheit or centigrade, I don't know. And the last part, last portion, end part is 80. Okay, since the boundary values are non zero, we modified the procedure. We break up the temperature function UXT into two parts, USX and UTX. USX and UT, XT, like this. USX is because our initial portion is not zero. Whenever initial portion is not zero, at that time, always we divide our equation, heat equation solution into two parts. One is US and UT, like this. US is a solution of your equation, first equation involving X only and satisfying the boundary condition. And UT is just defined. UT is a function of X and T. UT of X is a function defined by four ut of xt okay so us x is a steady state equation from two what is your two uxs is a, this is this one u equal to ax plus b okay so us x is a steady state equation steady state, steady state equation steady state situation and utxt may be regarded as a transient part of the solution which decreases with time increases. Anyway, so my AX, U equal to AX plus B, that was my equation to U equal to AX plus B, US, this is US and X. So if you replace by X equal to, if you replace this X by zero, you are going to get US at zero equal to 20 degree. Because when X is equal to zero, it is 20 degrees. So US at zero equal to 20 degree. And US at L equal to 80 degree. So whatever 20 degree, 80, 80 degree are provided to us, I just write it down in terms of my initial conditions. Okay, US zero equal to 20 degree. Now US X by equation two, that is equal to AX plus B. Because my X equal to, you can see my X equal to zero. So AX plus B, X equal to zero is simply B. So B equal to 20, B equal to 20. Again, here it is U. S L equal to A X plus B, but X is replaced by L. So A L plus B, and that is equal to 80. B is already 20, just plug it over here. So you're going to get A L equal to 60 minus 20, that is 80 minus 20 equal to 60. Divide by L, you're going to get 60 by L. So I'm fixing, I fixed my B and L. B equal to 20 and A equal to 60 over L. So if I go back and plug this equation in two, this value is in two, u s x equal to x plus b, a is 60 by x l and 20, 60 by x, uh, 60 by l, x plus 20. That is my u s x. So u s x, whatever I divided my equation into two parts, this u s x is already fixed. That is equal to, I found my a and b both, so this one is fixed. Now I'm going to work with my ut, and finally I'll put the value over here and we, uh, we are done. Good, so USX equation five says that my USX is done, 60 X by L plus 20. Now X equal to zero in my equation four will give us, because now I have U zero T equal to U zero T minus USX. Because if you look at this equation number four again, this UT of XT, we are looking for this one. So what I'm gonna do, UXT, let me send this one to the other side. So UXT minus USX equal this UTXT. And I'm gonna work with this UTXT. So this UTXT, when x equal to zero in four, we have UT zero x equal to this one, and that is equal to 20 minus 20 equal to zero. And x equal to L, we have ULT minus UXL. This is 80 and 80, so that is also equal to zero. So I forced my function again, it was given to at initial point 20 degree Fahrenheit, but I used transform, I, I trans, used the transformation, and again I started, I, I put over here zero, zero. So now I'm starting with zero, zero. So my UTX zero initial condition will be UX zero minus USX, right? Send this equation four, this is also from equation four. My T equal to zero. If you take T equal to zero, just plug the values, 100 by XL and this one. This is my equation. So equation, this, this is equation six, and this one is boundary condition equation seven. This one is a boundary condition. 
sorry, six is the boundary condition. Six is boundary condition, and this is the initial condition. So six gives a boundary condition, seven is the initial condition, and initial and boundary conditions are fixed. Then after again, I'm going to start with my transient solution UXT. So boundary conditions or boundary values given by six are both zero over here now. So we can start UTXT equal to BN sine n by x by L and e to the power of this one. It's the standard equation of my heat equation, standard heat equation solution. Where BN is given by 2 over L0 to L and Fx. Fx is nothing but my function 40x by L minus 20. So that is my Fx sine n by x by L of the Fourier series, Fx and sine n by x by L. This is my U, this is my V. Just take U into V rule and after some calculation, you're you going to get this one. Once you get this one, you can see over cosine n pi, cosine n pi is negative one to the power n. If you take n equal to one, so negative one to the power n, n equal to one, so one minus one is zero. n equal to three, negative one to the power three. Again, negative one, so one minus one is zero. So for all odd numbers, I'm getting zero. For all even numbers, I'm going to get that is equal to one plus one is two, so here is 80. One plus one is two and eight. So for all, just like previous example, here it is UTXT, just plug the values of BN over here. So BN equal to, negative 80 summation, negative 80 over n pi, sine n pi x by l, e to the power this one. Constant, negative 80 by pi, pull it out. Your summation runs from n equal to only even numbers, so even numbers in this one. If you don't want to write just two, four, six like this, and if you want to go in a smooth way, m equal to one to infinity like this, in that case, I'm gonna write my n equal to two m, n equal to two m, n equal to two m. So my, I have a smooth, summation m, m equal to one to infinity, one over m, one over m, because already I took this two out, here I divided by two, so 40, so it is m sine m pi x, two m pi x by l, e to the power of this one. And this uxt, whatever uxt you are getting, just plug this value of uxt in my solution here, usx was fixed, U, uh, utxt I figured it out, plug, Plug it back over here, you are getting your UXT, and that's the solution. That's the solution. Again, just two examples for heat equation. Try to solve these two examples. Again, it is very simple. I don't think that uh, you need to take uh, any kind of bifurcation, just like our last example. Both the examples, they are similar to your example number one. Look at here, U0T equal to zero, ULT equal to zero, initial condition is, sorry, boundary condition is zero. Initial condition is this one, type one. Second example, u x zero equal to three sine n pi x, boundary condition u zero t equal to zero and u one t equal to zero. So both are zero. This is also a first type. So nothing, no example, no homework is there on, there on type of example two. Both the examples, they are based on first type. First time I'm going to say that, not this one, this one, but this one, this example one. Sorry, sorry, this one, example one. Example one. So just use your trick function, trick solutions over here. Initial use boundary condition, initial condition, try to find your C1, C2, or it may be. Go back, plug it, uh, plug it back over here, and you are done. Just use half range for your series, both the cases. But that's what I was, uh, I mean, say, I told you guys last time that please try to work with me because the theme is exactly the same. Either it is wave equation or heat equation. Both ways we are getting the same thing. Exactly same thing, solution procedure or how that equations are developed, del square u by del t square equal to c square del square u by del x square. And del by del, del u by del t equal to c square del square u by del x square. So both these equations they are just generated like this, exactly same way. And then after we went through the solution method, solution methods are also same. U equal to capital X and T. Capital X is a function of small x, T is a function of small t. Both are independent. You can equate with some k. Once you equate with k, you are getting differential equation. You can go for auxiliary equation like this because it is higher order. So DPQ chapter four, once you get your solution, then just again plug back your solution in your U equal to capital X capital T form. 
you will be having three different solutions. But most likely, as I told you, that trick functions only will work over here, most likely. So just follow this method. Both of the cases, we are getting the same thing, same theme. Everything is good, but the difference is over here. Here it is just power one means heat equation, power two means vibrating string wave equation. And uh, I don't want to start the new article over here because only we read this thing. And day after tomorrow, probably I will, I would like to go through this one, two dimensional heat flow. But uh, again, I would request you, if it is possible, try to go through all four examples of two different applications of heat equation and wave equation first order. And now here it is, heat equation, two dimensional heat equation, second order, two dimensional means second order. So it is second order heat equation. I will let you know how it differs from your uh, first order heat equation. And then after we will be setting up the equations for the two dimensional heat flow. The equation, this is just, you don't have to pay attention. I mean, so you don't have to memorize all these things. This is just for your convenience that how these equations are generated. But you are the least concerned about it because no, not a single example is based on the generating method. No, just for your knowledge, I included this part. And once you set up the equation, then after we have a solution of that equation and we follow exactly the same way to get the solutions in the examples too. And finally, we will be ending up over here. This type of equation always called a Laplace equation. Laplace equation. Uh, Laplace equation in two dimension. Same way we can generate Laplace equation in three dimension also whenever we have some closed vessel and it passes through a closed, closed vessel. When we, we have Z axis, so three dimensional heat equation. That is just the straight generation from this two dimension. One can prove also, but I don't think that it's required for us to do this one. This is three dimensional heat equation that is called Laplace equation in two dimension. Laplace equation, sorry, Laplace equation in three dimension, X, Y, and Z. Laplace equation in two dimension, X and Y. Okay, and uh, solution of the Laplace equation in two dimension. These things we are going to see that will be probably the last thing. These things we are going to see next time means day after tomorrow and next Tuesday and then after most likely I have not decided so far but most likely I just would like to take your opinion if you want me to stop at that point I don't mind because ultimately my aim was to take few applications based on the Fourier series and PDs and that's what we have been doing since last last class and uh, if you want to stop with uh, one equation, I don't mind because you know we have finished heat equation, sorry, wave equation in one dimension, heat equation in one dimension, and then two dimension Laplace equation. That's what we are going to cover day after tomorrow. Then next Tuesday, probably Laplace equation, and then two dimensional wave equation will be left out. If you are not interested, if you think that we have done the enough thing throughout the semester, that's fine. I don't mind. If you want, if you are curious to know something more, definitely we will go over that wave equation of two dimension two. And that will be proper. Yeah. And the last article left out that is the transmission line equations. This transmission line equations that is highly useful in electrical engineering. They have been using this thing a lot, a lot. Electrical engineers. All these applications, they are the mechanical applications. Transmission of lines, again, the same theme, same technologies, the same technique is there that we are going to convert this uh, solution in the form of, we are getting the solution in the form of the Fourier series. We solve the Fourier coefficients, go back and plug the values and try to get the solution. Right, guys? So, again, wave equation in one dimension, heat equation in one dimension, heat equation in two dimension and wave equation in two dimension and transmission lines. These five are the applications of PDEs. And I think I did whatever I have decided in the beginning of the semester, we are exactly on the track. We have done un enough things, at least whatever I thought in the beginning of the semester. I was wondering at that time, I was not that sure whether we could be achieved up to here or not. But fortunately, by all your support, your help, 
your patient, we reach up to here. So I think that sounds really good to us, but it will be up to you. We will decide and I will let you know probably by next week, whether we want to move for the transmission line equations or not, that we'll decide later. Sounds good guys. And one more thing for each of these articles, I am not going to provide you more than two examples. Two, that is enough for me. Once you know the theme, how to solve, how to use Fourier series in solving your heat and wave equations, that's enough for me. And that's the ultimate goal to learn this technique. Any question? Thank you so much guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for your support. Stay safe. And thank you. And I'll see you day after tomorrow, right, guys? And yeah, I don't want to disclose the name, but you know this one better. Few of you guys were not there in study group meeting. Please don't lose your points. I have all your records. So don't blame me. If you are not present in the class, if you are not present in the study group meeting, that's not fair. So please, please, please be careful. We are almost at end. Don't be lazy. Try to find your time. I don't know why you guys, you guys are not online on study group meeting because right now you are not allowed to move to go outside, right? right. Plenty of time. So why don't we utilize this time? And it's just now more 15, 20 days and you are done. So please guys pay more attention. Try to follow all the advice and everything and try to perform your best. Right, guys? Yeah, sounds good, sir. Question. Any question for me? Thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate your patience, all you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. One question. Question, go ahead. Uh, are you gonna create a uh, meditation log turn in on Canvas? This sounds good, but are you doing meditation? Because we are not doing meditation over here since last one month when this uh, online teaching has started. But mm -hmm. I that one regularly. I told yeah, we, uh, hey, you reminded me, and I told you that I don't mind to go for the meditation. But few of you guys were not interested. But if you have prepared the meditation log, and I trust you guys honestly, if you have prepared that one, just send it to me. I will count that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, whatever sessions or how much time you spend for your meditation, I don't mind. That's fine. Just send it to me. I will try my best to count the max points. Sounds good? Sounds good, sir. Okay, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be careful. One of my students in Cal 3, she is sick since last night. She is suffering from severe fever and I'm really worried about her. I don't know. God bless everyone. And if you have simple fever in that case also we are getting scared right because the time is not good anyway guys take care of yourself and if you need any of my help don't hesitate I'm always here to help you out okay guys Jennifer, Blaine, Jack, Mike, Fleming thank you guys thank you take care Bye. Bye, sir. yes see you later uh, sir, I missed uh, yesterday's meeting yeah Mm -hmm. So, the internet provider for Colorado. Oh, okay. They, yeah, they were all down yesterday, so I didn't have any internet for all of yesterday. Oh, okay. So the internet was not that's not your fault, and I trust you. So let me just remove your name. My. But I I don't think we really talked about much because we'd already turned in the problems. Yeah, we turn in the problem, but if you remember, you know, last time I told you that once you are done with these problems by Saturday night, then after in your next study group meeting on Monday, just try to discuss the problems on the equation. Yes, sir. And uh, sir, I printed out all the notes, so I have, um, I've been going through them and stuff. So I trust I you. I know. I trust you. You are a sincere guy. I know. Good. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. So be attentive. Be particular. Stay safe. Thank you, guys. Oh. Have a good one, sir. You too. Thank you.